Good morning, preppers. Some excellent news. And time is short, but not like you think it was going to be in this case. This short time is actually good. Some good news in the prepping world. And I want to talk about solar. And again, they're always trying to push solar for everything. And I don't understand or agree with the fact that they try to push things on you like this. But overall, I love the technology. And I would love to have a really nice solar system for my house that could actually do everything I needed to without paying an arm and a leg. And that's actually what I'm going to talk about because soon, soon, we're not going to have to pay an arm and a leg for solar. Okay, so a real quick understanding about solar. Let me tell you how it works in case you didn't know. Overall, when we take silicon, we basically can get it from sand. And when we bake it, we can actually put it into a crystalline structure. And we found out when photons, you know, light hits that uh, layer of silicon, it releases an electron. On each side of the silicon, we have an anode and electrode, uh, an anode and a cathode, and the cathode carries electrons, and voila, you have electricity. Okay, long story short. Now, <clears throat> in that process, they dope the silicon with different elements to actually make it work better in certain ways. But unless they dope it like perfectly or close to it, it becomes even more inefficient than it already is. Because I understand solar technology is really cool, but it is not the most efficient bird in the world. 22%, I think, something like that is the max efficiency you're gonna, you're gonna pull out of it. And the more efficiency you want, the more they have to bake it in there and actually get extremely high temperatures, and which costs a lot of money to bake it at those temperatures. Therefore, the prices come down to us. And that's one of the reasons, by the way, solar is so ridiculously expensive. But now 22% efficiency, think about that. That's not great at all. In other words, if you have a 100-watt solar panel pointed at the sun, you're like, ah, oh, I'm getting 100 watts. The sun is really putting out for you in that same area approximately 500 watts of power. But you're only getting 100 watts out of it. So the efficiency is not that great until now. I would like to introduce the crystalline structure called perovskite. This is really neat. It was discovered in 1839 in the Ural Mountains. And ever since then, it's been found all over the globe. And even better, we can actually synthesize it very easily. It's neat stuff. Now, perovskite itself is a mineral made up of three primary types of atoms connected to it. Calcium is in the center, oxygen atoms in the middle, and titanium in the corners basically makes what's called calcium titanium oxide. And this stuff is really cool. It actually works better than silicon as far as releasing electrons. So when actually photons hit the perovskite, it actually produces more electrons, therefore produces more of a voltage for you. Better yet, no baking required. You don't have to bake it. And even more so, it's significantly cheaper. A lot of that because of the baking. Because the baking process, so much heat has to go into it, but not with perovskite. But the absolute best part about it is there's only certain ranges of light that works well with silicon. You know, anywhere, anywhere we go from uh, ultraviolet all the way to the scale of infrared, more ranges are actually picked up by perovskite, therefore producing more electricity that way as well. Really cool. Now, in the, pro in the past, there's been a big problem when it comes to perovskite, because they've been trying to do this for a long time, is unfortunately, once they put it into a panel and the sunlight starts hitting it, it breaks down very quickly. So labs for, for quite, a, quite some time have been trying to find ways to make it work better without it breaking down. You know, a matter of a few minutes is not going to work for a solar panel. So they've, start, they've tried doping it with different things. They actually tried making different types of layers to go on top of it. And sure enough, they found a layer that works on it very well. Now, I'm not going to go into as far as the names of the layer and all that stuff. All that's not important. But either way, now they've successfully made perovskite solar panels with layers on it that works better than regular silicon panels. Uh, and it's much more efficient. It's much more flexible. And the list goes on and on. So far, we're looking at over 30%. Um, from some of the data I've actually seen, says upwards of even 40% in some of the different types of labors they've made so far. So twice as efficient, possibly more than twice as efficient as regular silicon panels. However, not near the price. But of course, this is all brand new and everything's coming out. You know, it's always very expensive at first. And then over time, just wait, the prices start coming down. In fact, it probably won't even be available uh, for your solar system, probably probably at least a couple of years, maybe even three or four. But I mean, for me, I'm not in a position right now to buy solar. But who knows, maybe in three or four years, I might be there, or maybe I'm saving up my money for it. At that time, you may be able to get these new perovskite panels, and they work far better than your silicon panels. In fact, check this startup out.
Swift Solar leading with technology, using cutting edge science to engineer breakthrough photovoltaic technologies. All right, here it is, look. Perovskite tandem voltaics. So what they've actually done is taken the perovskite and actually double layer it. And notice double layers will actually pick up different types of bands of light, making it even more efficient. This is cool. So silicon, they're saying they're pretty efficient, pretty low cost. I don't know. I price this stuff out, not so much. And they're definitely not lightweight, by the way. If you ever get a solar panel, even a small one for like maybe your solar generator, no, no, not at all. But perovskite single junction is twice as light, but putting them in tandem, actually have two layers of the perovskite on there, actually makes them twice as efficient as it was before. They're saying 30% plus. Again, what I've read actually be even higher than that. And the cost extremely low and compared to silicon panels and very lightweight as, lightweight as well. Look at this. So here we can see in the lab, this person who's got his glove on holding one of these perovskite panels. Solar 3.0 is coming. But they're saying this is going to be a whole new revolutionary wave in solar for the fact that it's not going to be like these super rigid or semi-rigid panels of, of silicon you know, but these actually can go on practically anything because of their lightweight, because they're moldable and such. Like maybe we'll see far more cars with solar panels on them. Of course, a lot more buildings and everything else is what we're looking at for solar. So on here, they actually did a TED talk about it and stuff. It's really, really cool stuff, which makes me super excited. So as time goes on, keep an eye out for this because we're definitely going to see some serious changes coming in solar. And again, if you're not in a position to buy solar now, but maybe in a few years are, this may be something you'll be looking for. Um, they're actually in some ways talking about how the Propskite and Silicon will work together. Uh, to me, that seems like they're taking a step backwards. But the Perovskite can easily replace the silicon panels to be cheaper, more efficient, produce more power for you, more flexibility and everything else. So finally, finally, we're starting to see a break in the solar technology. I mean, they're trying to put it anywhere, everywhere anyway, which in a lot of ways I like that we're doing this with solar. But again, trying to push it on us, maybe not the way to go. But for my house, I would love to have solar. How about you? Okay, thanks for watching.